These are Arnold's top five diet tips to maximize muscle growth, taken straight from his book, The New Encyclopedia of Modern Bodybuilding. And these tips, especially number five, will completely change how you think about building muscle and getting ripped. Number one, never rush the process. In the past couple of decades, bodybuilding has exploded in popularity. And just like with any massively popular pursuit that requires years of hard work and consistency to see results, people are always looking for hacks and shortcuts to expedite the rate at which they reach their goals. Enter the dirty bulk. Dirty bulking is a diet technique where people will pretty much eat everything they can get their hands on with the goal of getting as many calories and macronutrients into their system as possible. The idea here is that this excess fuel will create an environment in the body where muscle hypertrophy, aka and muscle growth can happen at an accelerated rate when compared to those who follow a more reasonable, clean bulking diet that employs a smaller calorie surplus. But does dirty bulking really make you build muscle faster? Well, yes. Actually, we have research that supports the fact that a huge calorie surplus will lead to slightly more muscle growth than a smaller, more reasonable calorie surplus. But of course, there is a catch. You're gonna get fat as fuck. I think Arnold explained it best saying, bulking up by getting fat just gives you that much extra weight to work off later, and it promotes some very bad habits that you'll eventually have to break. So like Arnold said, bulking up by getting fat, aka by dirty bulking, might help you build slightly more muscle, but eventually you're gonna put on too much weight and you'll be forced to cut down once you start looking more like a chronic Fortnite player and less like a bodybuilder. And when cutting season finally does come around, you'll have to spend many, many weeks shredding off all that extra fat that you haphazardly put on while cultivating mass. Hey, I'm cultivating mass. I'm and not only will you likely lose that extra little bit of muscle that you put on during your dirty bulk during this cut, but every extra week that you spend cutting is an extra week that you could have been bulking up and building your physique. Well, I, I got into really good shape. Your body can only put on muscle so fast, and there is no way to rush the process unless you feel like injecting things into your ass and dying at 40. So when bulking, just employ a small calorie surplus of 250 to 500 calories per day and keep your diet clean. But there is a way we can maximize the amount of muscle mass that we gain each day, week, and year. And that's coming up in tip two. Tip number two, eat small to get big. According to Arnold, if building muscle is your goal, then you should do away with any kind of intermittent fasting or time-restricted eating, and instead eat three to four or even five times a day if you're really serious. In the Encyclopedia of Modern Bodybuilding, his main reason for this is because when it comes to losing fat, eating fairly often will ensure that you never get extremely hungry while cutting down, assuming your total calorie intake for the day stays under control. More on that later. Arnold goes on to say in the book that because you never get extremely hungry, your body has little reason to store a lot of your food intake as body fat. And while that second point is definitely bordering on bro science, Arnold makes a good point about how eating more frequently can help control your hunger during a cut. But that's not actually the main reason why you should be eating frequently throughout the day if you want to build a great physique. The real reason is because of something called muscle protein synthesis. This is a process in which your body creates new proteins to repair and build muscle tissue. When you work out, you create stress on your muscles, and this stress signals your body to repair the damaged muscle fibers. In response, your body uses amino acids, which are the building blocks of protein, to create new muscle proteins. These new proteins then help to repair and strengthen these muscle fibers, allowing them to grow bigger and stronger over time. So to build muscle as quickly as possible, you want to spike muscle protein synthesis as often as possible. And these two studies tell us exactly how to do that. The first study found that consuming a moderate amount of protein at each meal throughout the day stimulated muscle protein synthesis more effectively than skewing protein intake more towards your evening meal. Then our second study showed that consuming protein every three hours did a better job of stimulating muscle protein synthesis than eating smaller amounts of protein every 90 minutes and eating greater amounts of protein every six hours. So essentially, this is showing us that if we want to spike muscle protein synthesis as often as possible, you want to be eating high protein meals at regular intervals throughout the day. Even though this research came out decades after Arnold wrote the Encyclopedia of Modern Bodybuilding, Arnold hit the nail on the head when it came to meal timing. Arnold truly was a bodybuilding genius wise beyond his years. If you guys are liking the science-based bodybuilding content and want me to break down Arnold's old school training program next, leave a like, subscribe, and comment Arnold Training down below. On to tip number three, avoid false energy. In the encyclopedia, Arnold said, bodybuilders and other athletes are always looking for an edge, some way of taking their performance past established limits. However, as they say, there is no such thing as a free lunch. When you subject your body to various kinds of artificial stimulation, you get short-term results, but there's an inevitable letdown and your overall performance ability is damaged over time. Arnold then goes on to list a number of compounds and stimulants as false energy, like amphetamines, uh, nose snow, if you know what I'm talking about, 
noradrenaline, and the compound that is most relevant to bodybuilding nowadays, caffeine. Caffeine is used and in some cases abused by pretty much every single person who steps foot inside of a gym. And it's for good reason. Study after study has shown the performance benefits of consuming caffeine around training. And Arnold himself said that, obviously there's nothing wrong with a couple of cups of coffee before training, but a handful of caffeine pills is just gonna make you climb walls and possibly injure yourself during training. Now I'd say the modern day equivalent of taking handfuls of caffeine pills is dry scooping a couple scoops of pre-workout before every training session. And while I don't necessarily think that taking high High doses of caffeine before training will necessarily lead to injury, I do believe that there are some much more serious downsides to chronic caffeine and pre-workout usage during and around training. The main issue is that many people use caffeine as a crutch for their performance rather than a performance booster. I often see this when I start working with a new younger client. They don't get enough sleep, they eat like shit, and they're under an extreme amount of stress. So unsurprisingly, their energy levels are trash. So to be able to have the energy to get through their workouts and their days more generally, they need to use ever increasing high doses of caffeine. And because of this quote unquote false energy as Arnold calls it, they don't feel the negative impacts of their unhealthy lifestyles as strongly as if they didn't have this band-aid solution making them feel like everything is okay. But as their caffeine tolerance keeps getting higher and higher, they'll need to up their caffeine intake to keep pace so they can maintain these energy levels. This can turn into a negative feedback loop incredibly quickly, as high doses of caffeine, especially when consumed past noon, can seriously impact one's ability to fall asleep and get good quality deep sleep. And as you probably know, one of the fastest ways of ruining your gains in the gym and crushing your testosterone levels is by reducing the amount of high quality sleep that you're getting. If you feel having a couple cups of coffee early in the day helps you make the most out of your training and life, then great, go for it. But if you feel that you need to have increasingly high amounts of caffeine throughout the day just to make it through, then you're most likely becoming over-reliant on false energy and need to take a serious look at your lifestyle. But before we move on to tip four, just a funny side note, in this section about false energy, Arnold says that those who believe that taking drugs will make them champions are living in a fantasy world, and that to develop the optimum physique, you just need to say no to drugs. Which is obviously a bit of a joke because Arnold's sport of choice, bodybuilding, is the only sport where drug use in the form of steroids is almost a requirement to compete at the highest levels of the sport. Just thought that was kind of funny. Tip number four. Balance is everything. In the encyclopedia, Arnold warned against following a diet model that had you over or under emphasizing any of the three macronutrients. He listed insanely high 70% protein diets, super low 12% protein diets, and diets that are super high in carbohydrates as being suboptimal dietary models for building muscle. And I 100% agree with Arnold that to build muscle optimally, you need to find the right balance of fats, proteins, and carbohydrates. But not only do I agree with him, so does the modern day bodybuilding science. In this 2019 narrative review titled Nutrition Recommendations for Bodybuilders in the Offseason, the authors reviewed all the available scientific literature and provided nutritional guidelines for bodybuilders who want to gain as much muscle as possible. They've broken down the recommendations into two groups novice slash intermediate and advanced trainees. Notice that there are set recommendations for fat and protein intake, and once you've hit those levels, they recommend you use the rest of your daily calories for carbohydrates. The reason for this is that with fats and proteins, your body only needs so much to maximize your ability to put on muscle. A baseline dietary fat intake is important for proper testosterone, for instance, and of course, you need a steady stream of protein coming into your system to maximally stimulate muscle protein synthesis like we talked about earlier. But if you consume too much of either proteins or fats, you'll start to experience diminishing returns from these benefits. Whereas with carbohydrates, your body can make use of much higher levels. Carbohydrates are the main fuel source that we burn as we weight train. So with more carbs, we can train harder and for longer periods of time, leading to more gains. Not only this, but carbs also stimulate insulin release and the release of insulin-like growth factor one, which are both anabolic hormones in the body, which help you build muscle. Now, if you're looking at the study and it seems pretty complicated, don't worry because I have a much simpler way of figuring out the exact amount of calories and macronutrients that you need to reach your goals. Introducing Macrofactor. Macrofactor is a digital diet coach and diet tracking app all in one. You can think about it as an upgraded version of MyFitnessPal. It uses the latest science along with your personal stats and goals to create for you a personalized diet plan that will help you achieve your muscle building goals in as little time as possible. And along the way, as you track your eating and your body weight changes, it'll adjust your program as needed to make sure that you never plateau. 
sale. To give it a try for yourself, download the app using the link in the description of this video, and then use affiliate code Demers for your first two weeks free. But there's more to dieting for muscle growth than just calories and macros. And that brings us to our last and possibly most important point. Tip five, don't get dietary tunnel vision. Over and over in the new encyclopedia of modern bodybuilding, Arnold talks about how important a good nutritious diet is for anyone who's looking to build an awe-inspiring physique. But as Arnold says in the book, it not only helps you get bigger and stronger, but helps keep you healthier as well as supporting your immune system so that you don't miss training sessions due to problems like colds. The benefits of good nutrition also include everything from enhancing your recovery, from heavy workouts, to giving you good skin, to reducing optimal function of the liver and other internal organs. Nowadays, people excuse their shitty, low quality, low nutrient density diets by saying things like, it's all about calories in and calories out, bro, or I can eat anything as long as it fits my macros. This type of thinking puts short-term physique gains over long-term health and ultimately long-term physique development. If you solely focus on hitting your macronutrient and calorie intake each day, you could be missing out on important vitamins and minerals that are essential for your body to perform at its best and for you to stay healthy. This is because while many processed foods contain the macronutrients that we need to build muscle, they're often fairly devoid of micronutrients like vitamins and minerals. Maintaining the levels of essential micronutrients like zinc, vitamin D, magnesium, iron, and all the B vitamins is incredibly important for keeping you healthy, maintaining good hormone levels, and keeping you in the gym training hard for years to come. Now, I'm not saying you should go out and start taking every supplement under the sun in order to get enough of these micronutrients. Instead, you should focus on eating a wide variety of nutrient-dense whole foods like vegetables, meats, fruit, starches, healthy fats, and other animal products like eggs in order to make sure that your body is getting everything that it needs. Then after you've dialed in your diet, you can look into getting some blood work done by a professional so you can figure out exactly which supplements you should be taking to fill any nutritional gaps in your diet. That's the video. Now to learn more about the science of nutrition, check out this video I made about Bruce Lee's crazy unique diet plan and I'll see you there.